The final lesson of this section is going to be us exploring the standard library and seeing why we were able to use functions like the home handler and the contact handler without ever actually converting them into um, the http.handler func type that we just explored in the last lesson. So to do this, we're going to actually get rid of some of the code we have here. Um, we're going to come back to something with a router, and we don't really need the um, http.handle funks as much in the future. But for now, just so we can actually dive into the code, let's go ahead and write http.handle func. And we're going to do the root path is going to be the home handler. And we're going to do http.handle func. The contact path will be the contact handler. And here we'll pass in nil. We will save. And then let's make sure everything's working. So let's go ahead and uh, go run this. Let's go to our browser and just sort of check. Uh, you'll see here that we don't have the not found page anymore. Um, that was because of the way that I just set up the, uh, the slash route as being the home handler all the time. But as long as the contact page is working, and it is, uh, we at least know these two are working. Okay, so from here, what we wanna look at is this handle func, and that's what we were using before, so we wanna see why did this work without actually converting these to any other type. So if we go into the source code here, you will see that handle func uses the default serve mux, and it calls the handle func method on it. So we wanna look at the handle func method on the default serve mux, so I'm gonna to go to that definition, and you'll see here that now we have the type serve mux, and we have that handle func, and this looks exactly the same as the http.handle func um, because it takes in the same arguments and everything. But the only real logic here is checking to see if the handler is nil, and if so, it panics. Aside from that, it calls mux.handle. And mux.handle is very similar to http.handle in that its second argument has to be of the type http.handler. So if I were to actually look at the definition of this, you would see that it needs a handler as the second argument. So let me go back to um, the uh, handle func that we had. Uh, let's do this one. This is the handle func we were just looking at. And we know that this last argument in mux.handle needs to be of the type handler, so how is that happening? Well, here we have this handler func at the end, and that looks like it's calling a function, but what's really happening is this is converting our handler into a handler func. And this is the same as when in our main.go, we were writing something like http.handler func uh, path handler, and we are passing that in right here. When we were doing this line here, like we had, um, this is the same thing. The only reason why we don't see the HTTP prefix is because this is already inside of the HTTP package. So it doesn't need to use that prefix to access this. So this is doing that conversion and it's, what essentially allows us to you know, just pass in a function without having to do the conversion ourselves. Um, what's interesting here is because this is set up this way, mux.handle actually has all of the logic for handling all of these different paths and registering them and doing anything it needs to do. So you'll see that this function is a lot longer than what we were just looking at because there's a little bit more logic going on there to make sure that it can actually process this or you know, take this incoming handler, register it and, and send requests to it. So this allows us to make conversions, which we saw here. Um, at any point in time, we can take a function we have and we can convert it to a handler func, and then it implements the handler interface. But this also means that we could technically get away with never using this handle func. Um, as I said, this is kind of a convenience thing. So we could get rid of this entirely, and now our code's gonna error, but we could go ahead and write http.handle or handler func and do the same thing here, http.handler func. So if we convert both of our functions into handler functions, and then we just pass this back as nil like we did, um, this is actually gonna work as well. So we don't have to use handle func here, we could just always use handle and that would work. Um, but as I said before, handle func is provided for us because it you know simplifies things just a hair. Um, it allows us to not have to write this bit every single time, that just simple word func means that that's what we're doing. Another interesting thing here is that we could actually do the reverse. We could only use handle func. And I know that sounds weird, but um, I just wanna show you uh, that when we convert something into a handler func like this, we then also can use the serve HTTP method on it. So I could just pass this serve HTTP method in as an argument here. And I know this is gonna look really weird, but serve HTTP really just is a method that has 
the response writer and the request as the two arguments. So it matches what HandleFunk wants. Um, you can see here that this actually works as well. Um, you can pass in this type and it doesn't really complain about it. Or at least right now it's not. But we could pass in the serve HTTP. And this is getting kind of meta because this serve HTTP method will then call the contact handler or function itself. Um, so we're kind of just adding obfuscation on top of things that would just slow the code down a hair. So there's no real reason to do this right now, but there will definitely be cases in the future where let's say we have a type um, server and let's say that server type has like a func um, like a home handler or home, yeah, just say handler. And this might be a function that takes in a request and response. So what this means is that if we had a server, we could actually pass in something like s.homehandler as the argument here. And because we're passing in a function, this still works exactly like when we were passing in the home handler up here. Uh, the only real difference here is that because this is a method on the server type, it would actually have access to whatever fields were on the server type. So if we had something like a DB connection here, which I'm just gonna call string for this moment, um, we would have access to them. So you don't need to use all this right now. Um, we'll gradually get into this as we go through the course. But I wanted to point that out that you might occasionally see me using something like handle func, um, or you might see me using something like uh, just handle. And, and if you see me using the two at times, just keep in mind that um, handle func means we're taking in a function, whereas handle means that we're taking in something that implements the handler interface, uh, which we're, I'd have to tweak this to make that work. And we can convert back and forth. So I guess the key takeaways is that handle is for handlers and handle func is for handler funks or functions that look like them. Okay, so I wanna get this back to where it was. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm gonna actually just use the router type I'm gonna get rid of the server stuff. I'm gonna get rid of all this. And I'm gonna do uh, router. Then I'm gonna do var router router. And then the path handler we don't need, so I'm just gonna comment that out. I'll probably delete it at some point, but I'm gonna leave it just in case it's useful in future lessons when we're exploring stuff. Okay, so that's it for section two. We've dug into these HTTP handlers and handler functions and seen how they work. Um, what we're gonna do in this next section is we're gonna dive more into routing. Um, we're gonna look at how the HTTP's servmux works a little bit and, and get a little more experience with it. But then we're also gonna look at how we could potentially build our own custom router that's, uh, instead of being like this where it's hard-coded, we'll see if we could add some dynamic routes. And then finally, we're gonna look at third-party routers that exist and see if we can maybe get one of those to work for our course.